I see that there's 145 of you on this call right now, so I'm going to let you in on a little secret. The Odyssey 2021 Symposium is going to be epic. Um, for those of you who have attended previous Odyssey Symposiums, I think most of you have come away with uh, learning something, getting an opportunity to collaborate with other members of the community, and had a little bit of fun along the way too. And this year is no different. We have put a lot of time and energy into coming up with a way to make the most of a collaborative community experience, even doing this virtually. Um, so what I'm gonna do in the next uh, 40 minutes or so somewhat is walk through all of the activities that are gonna take place at the Odyssey 2021 Symposium, including uh, unveiling for you a new virtual world that we'll all get to live in for a few days. Uh, and you'll be able to choose your own journey to see how you can best engage with the rest of the community. So. First things first, when is the Odyssey 2021 symposium? So the the hold the date that you all should have had and hopefully have registered for was Sunday, September 12th through Wednesday, September 15th. Um, that is four calendar days. Uh, and that is gonna be split up across a series of activities, which I'm gonna walk through in, in detail. The first day is Sunday, September 12th, and this is gonna be a tutorial that is uh, opened up. Uh, and we are gonna do a tu community tutorial on building concept sets. And I'm gonna talk a little bit more in depth about what, what we're actually gonna do during this tutorial. So that's gonna be day day one, September, uh, September 12th on a Sunday. Uh, there'll be an opportunity for those who wanna learn a little bit about this and engage with each other on the topic of building concept sets, you'll be able to do that. Day two, Monday, September 13th, we're actually uh, going to have an event that we're calling the Odyssey Reproducibility Challenge. And this is going to be an interactive activity um, that uh, we are we are planning for those who want to actively participate and engage in doing some research. We have a very well-defined project that we want to conduct during the course of the day. And for those who want to observe and, and learn by watching, um, there's going to be a great opportunity for you to engage on day two. That's Monday, September 13th. And I'll explain the details of that as well. When, what people typically think about for the main Odyssey Symposium is a day where there's lots of presentations and opportunities to interact. And we've extended that to be two days this year. The main symposium will start Tuesday, September 14th. It, uh, and will continue through Wednesday, September 15th. On Tuesday, September 14th, the sequence of activities, you will get to hear from George. Oh, I got somebody who said they can't see my screen. Can others, can I get a thumbs up from Sarah or Aza or George? You can see my screen? Okay, good. Okay, so whoever can't see their screen, if you want to try to log back in, hopefully that will help. Um, uh, thank you, Chan can see. Um, great. Uh, so on Tuesday, September 14th, we're going to start the day with uh, George giving us a state of the community um, that is going to be, uh, I think, going to be eye opening for many people. You know, one of the things that's been a uh, particularly during this uh, pandemic time when we're all kind of siloed and stuck in our own house, sometimes it's hard to actually have a perspective of just how broad uh, and deep our community has gone. And I think as George has been taking inventory of everything we've been doing, I think the state of the community is going to be a good opportunity for us to take stock of what our community really is as a whole. Uh, and you'll be able to hear, hear from him and others in the community about that. We are then going to have a plenary session that is going to be focused on Odyssey's impact on the COVID-19 pandemic. We've done a lot of really important work over the last 18 months centered on both conducting methodologic research to figure out the appropriate ways to use observational data for characterization, estimation, and prediction. But we've also had numerous clinical applications that have directly influenced clinical care and, and health policy um, around the world in, as it relates to COVID. And so we will be showcasing that work and celebrating the accomplishment of the community during this plenary session. From there, we will go into our collaborator showcase uh, and I'm going to spend uh, quite a bit of time today really detailing exactly how this is going to work. But our collaborator showcase is, is usually the, the kind of uh, most substantial event at our symposium. It's an opportunity for all of you to engage with each other. This year we had a record number of submissions for posters, lightning talks, and software demonstrations that will be showcased during the collaborator showcase. And we've created a, um, created a pretty exciting way that we 
hope to really provide meaningful ways for everybody to actively participate and engage in that. And then we've also just created a space uh, and time for networking so that um, we know it's super hard in this virtual world. We're all just like sitting in our basements by ourselves, not getting to chat. And last year, I thought Craig did a, just an absolutely remarkable job of curating really high quality content for the symposium. And I was really proud of all the presenters that everything they showed. But the one piece of feedback we got last year was what was missing was that interpersonal connection where we just didn't get a chance to engage with each other as fully as we wanted to. And so we really took that feedback to heart and we've tr tried to create a, a very different experience for this year's symposium that I'll, that I'll uh, uh, share with you today um, that we really hope that you'll, you'll uh, uh, buy into and have fun with. On Wednesday, September 15th, we will again reprise the Collaborator Showcase. As you're going to see, we've created a virtual world for this to all take place, which means it can happen anywhere around the world at any time. And we've created an opportunity for those our colleagues that are um, in any time zone, whether you're in um, US or North America or Europe or the Asia Pacific region, there's going to be an opportunity for you to mean meaningfully engage with each other throughout the course of these two days. And we've created a place for that to actually meaningfully take place. We will then be having a second plenary that's going to be focused on generating reliable evidence. And I'll talk you through a little very briefly, just give you a teaser about, uh, about what this is going to entail. And then we're going to have more time for networking. We're going to really focus on making sure that we, even though we can't all be physically together, that in this virtual space, we have the opportunity to engage and, and interact with each other on a, on a meaningful level throughout the symposium. So this is our high level four days of what the Odyssey 2021 symposium will be. I'm going to walk through more details of each of these and give you guys a sneak preview of what that's going to look like. Before I do that, I want to highlight um, one of our newest members of the Odyssey uh, community. Uh, Yasser uh, Albagami uh, is a uh, researcher. He is currently an assistant professor at King Saud University in Riyadh, Saudi Arabia. Uh, last year, he was finishing up his PhD at the University of Florida uh, uh, under uh, Almut Winterstein in her lab, um, which is a top lab for pharmacoepidemiology. Yasser published this paper just last month um, entitled uh, Glucagon-like Peptide 1 Receptor Agonists and Chronic Lower Respiratory Disease Exacerbations Amongst Patients with Type 2 Diabetes. This, public, this paper was published in Diabetes Care, which is the top diabetes journal. And um, when I read this paper, I was, I was quite struck by it. Uh, it is a really great demonstration of what I would consider to be current best practice in the field of observational research. And um, uh, was done by a great lab published in a great um, a journal. Um, and it really got me and other members of the community excited to think about uh, what does it mean to generate an important clinical insight and how do we actually take evidence generated from observational data and actually drive it all the way to the point of really impacting clinical care. And so just to highlight this paper a little bit more fully, I'll, I'm going to read the abstract to you to give you a sense of this problem statement. And, and we are using this paper throughout the entire symposium as a really focal point for our community. So I think it's worth, worth the time and intention for folks to, to, to to bear with me on this. So there's emerging data from animal and human pilot studies that suggest the potential benefits of GLP-1s on lung function. And so in this study that Yasser and the team led, they aim to assess the association of GLP-1 uh, and chronic lower respiratory disease or CLRD exacerbations in a population with comorbid type 2 diabetes and CLRD. Now, for those who are not familiar with CLRD, think of that as asthma or um, chronic obstructive pulmonary disease, COPD. So basically, there's a huge set of population out there that have type 2 diabetes and they've got asthma or COPD. And for those, this study aimed to determine whether GLP-1s, which is a treatment for diabetes, whether or not it might also have this extra secondary beneficial effect on uh, exacerbations associated with asthma. And so Yasser and the team conducted a new user active comparative cohort design study using the IBM market scan commercial claims and encounters data set. They compared patients who had type 2 diabetes with CLRD who started treatment on GLP-1s 
with a different diabetes treatment, uh, DPP-4s. And their primary outcome was time to hospitalization due to CLRD. And their secondary outcome was CLRD exacerbations associated with inpatient or outpatient visits. And so they conducted um, very rigorous analyses to estimate the effect of taking the GLP-1s on these two outcomes. And what they revealed in their analysis, they had thousands of patients exposed, dozens of events in both treatment arms, and they actually estimated a hazard ratio of 0 0.5 uh, for the primary outcome. That basically is to suggest that GLP-1s might actually uh, uh, decrease or cut in half the risk of CLRD exacerbations. Uh, and their secondary analysis, they showed this 30% decrease in, in CLRD exacerbations. And so they conclude in this paper that GLP-1s had fewer CLRD exacerbations and that considering both plausible mechanism pathways and this real world evidence, potential benefits of GLP-1s may be considered in the selection of an anti-diabetic treatment regimen and that randomized clinical trials are warranted to confirm our findings. Now, here's the thing. This is a spectacularly well done paper. When I read this, I reached out to the authors immediately and I said, this is really great. How do we figure out how to determine if this is real? I've been working actively with Yasser and he's been a tremendous collaborator uh, in, in collaborating and to get us prepared for this symposium that you all get to engage in. But I got one major bone to pick with Yasser. And it's not just about him, but it's about our entire field. This last sentence, randomized clinical trials are warranted to confirm our findings. If this is a really well done study with a really impactful finding that could directly impact the lives of patients around the world, why are we gonna bail out and say somebody else should go spend multiple years and multiple millions of dollars to conduct some trial so that we can may or may not find this finding to be true. Now, I'm not picking on Yasser here. He's done an amazing job with this study. This is the sentence we put in almost all of our papers. We as an observational research community, we do studies, we do a really great job, we might find something important, and then we say, so somebody should do the real research to figure out if it's true. I wanna call, I wanna call nonsense on that. At this symposium, our job in the Odyssey community is to think about how to generate reliable evidence so that we don't say somebody else go generate the real evidence, but instead we say, what do we have to do as a community to change the narrative so that when we generate evidence, we believe it's real enough that we can start changing the conclusions we might make from a study and start talking about how to actually directly impact the lives of those patients that this evidence is intended to inform. And so I, sh I share this study because you, um, as, as we go through the rest of the symposium, this study is going to serve as a backdrop, a motivating example of what I think is the aspiration and what we could achieve as a community. And while Yasser and the team have done an amazing job on this paper, and we're going to build on the strength of what they've done, I think it actually highlights the big opportunity we have as a community that we're going to showcase at this year's Odyssey Symposium to really try to change the narrative about what's possible with reliable evidence generation from observational data. So with that and with a shout out to Yasser, um, I'm going to talk about exactly how we are going to use this study as a motivation to orient ourselves as a community. First, on Sunday, September 12th, we will hold our tutorial on building concept sets. And um, generally, all of you have been conducting lots of observational studies. You know the pain that exists when you have to produce a code list. We're going to say something like, we want to study GLP-1s in patients with type 2 diabetes or CLRD. Already in that one sentence, it raises the question, how do I find the codes for GLP-1s? How do I find the codes for type 2 diabetes? How do I find the codes for CLRD? Uh, and what we've recognized across our community is that lots of people are going about doing this task in lots of different ways. And while as a community, we've built lots of pretty powerful tools to make this happen in a more efficient, more consistent, more reproducible manner, we are not as a community all applying those tools in a consistent fashion or are even aware of them necessarily. So in this tutorial that we'll hold on Sunday, we are going to focus 
on um, um, providing a, a training session on what is a concept set? What is this Odyssey jargon that we have been embedded into most of our tools? How do you build a concept set from source codes? How do you build a concept set if you're given a list of drugs? How do you build a concept set if someone simply expresses a clinical idea? Uh, and Lisa just asked, how do I sign up for this tutorial? I'm so glad you asked, Lisa. Uh, so registration has now been posted. Uh, just like about an hour ago on the Odyssey website. If you go to odyssey.org slash sep 12 building concept sets tutorial, and Elise just strategically posted the chat in the chat. We have limited space for this tutorial. We expect that this is probably going to fill up probably today. Um, and so that's why this meeting is your first chance. If what I just said was either interesting or confusing and you want to learn more, you should probably take the moment now to go ahead and register and join us for our full day tutorial, September 12th on building concept sets. All right, and we will be using uh, Yasser's paper as the motivating example there. So we will actually look at that paper, look at what concept sets are needed for that paper, and we'll walk through the exercise of implementing the pieces just as Yasser had to do to conduct his own study. Um, so uh, it will be a great opportunity for you to, to, to start to learn about the journey that Yasser and his team went through for his, his publication. Now on Monday, September 13th, we're going to be holding the Odyssey Reproducibility Challenge. And I'm really excited about this event. George and Anna and I have been trying to think about exactly how to, to, to structure this, but I'm going to give you a very broad strokes of our current thinking about this. So a paper comes out, a tremendously good paper like Yasser's, and you read it and you're like, wow, this is a great study. It is well written, it's transparent, it has nice supplemental materials, it provides a compelling clinical finding, which if it's true, would directly impact clinical care. So then the question is, well, what's the next step? And several of you have read the book of Odyssey. You know that we talk a lot about how do we get evidence quality to be the point that we consider it to be reliable. And you've heard me rant about that. One of the key tenets of reliable evidence is reproducibility simply the ability for an independent researcher to take a study, execute on identical data with identical methods and get identical answers. And reproducibility is like a core tenant y'all learned in like high school chemistry class or whatever. Um, but uh, as in our field, this is uh, something that we sometimes fall short of. Um, Mitch Conover and I have been actually working very closely with Yasser over the last several weeks to learn about how to do reproducibility analyses using Yasser's paper as a motivation. And it stimulated us to think about how could we as a community learn to be more reproducible as a community. And so this workshop is actually going to be a large scale research experiment that we're going to conduct. The basic task is going to be the following. Given a publication from Yasser, which I'm already telling you, really well done, really transparent, really well written. Given a description that's only in a manuscript, and Yasser will be there, but he's not going to give you any hints about this. Given just a paper, to what extent can you reproduce it? To what extent can you build a cohort that actually is, finds the exposure population of interest, that defines the outcomes in a consistent manner to the original author's intent? Now, there's been a bunch of research like this in the field. Shirley Wang has led this effort called the Repeat Initiative uh, out of Harvard that's tried to think about how to reproduce studies. But what's never been done to our knowledge is having multiple independent research groups given the same exact task with the same exact data and the same guidance and the same uh, inputs using the same tools and to see how similar or different uh, people's journeys towards creating cohorts for exposures and outcomes may be. And so for this exercise, we are uh, inviting people to join as workshop collaborators. These are individuals who will join and actually participate in reading the paper, implementing the cohorts in Atlas, and evaluating the results. And we intend to summarize our findings of this workshop um, through presentation and publications. And so we are looking for folks that actually want to dive in and, and participate in this reproducibility activity with us. For those of you who might be a little bit intimidated about trying to go off and, and conduct a study today, we're also going to create an opportunity for those to be workshop observers 
who can basically just watch the proceedings as they take place and just learn from benefiting from seeing all the different perspectives that people take towards this task. This will be a full day activity on Monday, September 13th from eight to five, and we encourage people to register to sign, uh, to, to participate. Elise has just opened up the registration, so you should be able to see it. The link is in the chat. It's also here, odyssey.org slash SEP13 Odyssey Reproducibility Challenge Workshop. Um, you can sign up either as a collaborator if you're really ready to put some skin in the game and do some work, or you can sign up as an observer if you just want to watch and learn from the others in the community. So really encourage you all to um, participate in this activity. I think it's going to be a heck of a lot of fun, uh, and I, I'm positive we're going to learn quite a lot. I know um, Mitch and I have already learned uh, a tremendous amount just uh, starting, starting to prepare for this. All right, so if that wasn't fun enough, then we get to the main proceedings. Uh, on sep Tuesday, September 14th, we'll have our symposium. Uh, at 8 a.m. Eastern time, George will deliver the state of the community. From 9 to 12, we will have a plenary session on Odyssey impact in COVID-19. You'll hear a series of presenters, uh, as well as a panel discussion about the work we have done and where we can go to end this uh, pandemic. Uh, we will then have four hours dedicated just for our collaborator showcase, and then afterwards we're going to have ample time to, to have a lot of fun together. If you haven't yet registered for the main symposium, you need to do that. This link has been out there for quite some time, but if someone's on this call and saying, hey, I guess I probably should sign up. Yeah, you should probably sign up. Um, uh, Lisa is doing a great job of making sure that everybody is uh, in there and, and paying attention. So um, please, um, please do plan to join us for this activity. That first day will, oh, and when you register, um, you're gonna receive an email from Elise that says an Odyssey Symposium surprise for you. This is not spam. This is not a joke. Um, we do have something very special in store for those who do register for the symposium. If you would like to receive it, um, you do need to fill out a form to give us your home address so that something could be delivered to you um, prior to the symposium. So if you register and you get this email, please take, a, take the moment to fill it out. If you'd like to participate, you've got a Five days left to sign up to receive a surprise. All right, on Wednesday, September 15th, the symposium will continue. We'll reprise the collaborator showcase. We will have a plenary session on generating reliable evidence. This will again showcase Yasser and his, his publication and what we as an Odyssey community can do to contribute, to add, to build on that work and for us to reflect on what does it actually mean for us to generate reliable evidence that's imp intended to drive clinical care. And so I think it's going to be a very impactful conversation that we're going to be having and it's going to be an interactive dialogue for everybody who's actually participated in the plenary. So you don't just get to sit back on your uh, and listen, we actually will be in engaging everybody throughout that session. And then we're going to have an entire afternoon of opportunity for networking and engagement. So that is our symposium outline. Please do register. And now I'm going to introduce you to the virtual world you'll be living in for a few days at the Odyssey Symposium. Uh, last year, for those of you who participated, you might know that we used Microsoft Teams as the primary place to engage. This year, we are extending that further. We have created a, an entire virtual avatar world experience using the platform called GatherTown. Uh, and so in GatherTown, um, we've created a virtual community where the entire showcase or the entire symposium and, and collaborator showcase will take place. There are multiple worlds where you and your little avatar will get to walk around and check out things. Uh, and you'll be able to experience the, the symposium as you like, uh, whenever and however you want. Uh, and what I'm going to do for the next 10 minutes is Elise and I are going to give you a little bit of tour of what this Odyssey 2021 symposium experience in Gather Town is going to look like. So what I'm going to do right now is I'm actually going to stop my screen on, stop sharing my uh, face here. And now I'm going to log in to the Odyssey 2021 Gather Town experience. I'm going to turn on my camera. All right, here I go. I'm jumping into Odyssey 2021. 
What you can see is I've just jumped into a virtual world in Gather Town, and you can see I'm just in this weird orange plane. To give you a sense of this little avatar, that's me, um, where I am on this right hand side, I'm going to show you a map. And you can see that I'm in the middle of a very large expansive virtual world sitting on top of the Odyssey logo. And it says that this is the Odyssey 2021 symposium. And you can also see that there are arrows suggesting that we can go check out clinical applications, methodologic research, data standards, and open source development. But what I can also do is take my little avatar and I can just walk around and see things that can be done. For example, I could walk up here and I can see, oh, there's a help desk. Hey, Elise, how are you doing? You can see Elise is up there at the top. She's uh, available. Uh, and you, when you are walking around in the Gather Town experience, you can actually see and talk to people that are in your near proximity. You can interact with them either on a one on one basis or in small groups. Uh, Elise seems to be wanting to run away from me, and you can also do that. It's just like the awkwardness that you experience at a physical conference. If you want to be social, you can, and if you want to go hang out in a corner and drink by yourself, you can do that too. Elise is hanging out here in this private space, which is the help desk. She's going to be at the symposium right next to her little uh, candy jar there, um, uh, providing people guidance. But in addition to that, there's lots of other spaces that one can navigate around. You can see here we've got little couches set up with little TVs, and that's actually because the plenary sessions last year, you could just sit in teams by yourself at your house and you could sit and watch the plenary sessions. And one of the things that we heard is like, sometimes it's nice to sit with a buddy and watch the symposium and talk to other people. And so you can actually do that. Here you can see Elise and I are in this same communal space watching the symposium together. And you can see we've created a huge number of seating areas for you all to, to play around with. We also created a bar in case you want to join me for a drink later in the day. You know that's where I'll be. Um, but we've created a, 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 a large collection of opportunities for folks to engage. If you want to have a private meeting session and sit down and collaborate with folks, you can go join a table uh, and have a conversation about whatever topics of interest to you. Uh, if you are interested particularly in having some sort of a hackathon session, you can see we've set up tables for the hackers in the community who want to be able to sit down and uh, work together. Um, but if you just want to uh, have a, a, relax, a relaxing conversation, you can go find, find a place to meet and chat, chat things up. Ultimately, though, the symposium is about our collaborator showcase. And so you'll see in the top corners that there's opportunities to go from beyond this networking room into the spaces of interest. So here I'm going to go up into methodologic research. Here you can see Elise and I are in the methodologic research room. Here you will see spaces set up for all of the posters that are part of our conference. So you can see Juan Banda here. He's got poster MR02. And when Juan submits his poster, it will be in this private space whereby I can go look at the poster, check it out, and have a direct conversation with Juan and whoever else is in this private space to talk about the posters. Now we have over a hundred uh, collaborator showcase um, uh, content material that includes all of these posters. I think we have 81 posters that were accepted for presentation. We also have uh, places to hang out and chat. We've got viewing rooms for all of our lightning talks. So if you want to see uh, here, you can see actually Juan also has a lightning talk. Let's go over this one. Uh, Mitch. Mitch is going to give me given a lightning talk uh, about uh, methodologic research. And so I might go grab an armchair and watch his presentation whenever I feel like doing it anytime during the, the two days. And when when that uh, specific period of time is happening, hopefully Mitch will be hanging out here and I can go have a private conversation with Mitch in this virtual space to learn more about what's going on with Mitch. You're gonna see that in addition to methodologic research, um, there are rooms for all of our core domains, clinical applications, methods research, open source development, and data standards. And so there's, these are each providing you all an opportunity to meaningfully engage, participate, check out the work, 
uh, and, and make connections with members of our community. So we have this entire virtual world we have now created and we will be able to use this to its fullest on Tuesday, September 14th, Wednesday, September 15th, to engage in listening to the plenary sessions, doing the collaborator showcase, networking with each other to get a drink, uh, uh, and other fun, fun activities that we have in store that will all be embedded within this GatherTown virtual environment. So with that, I'm gonna get out of Gather Town. I'm just gonna minimize that for a second. Um, go back to here. So this is gonna be our virtual world for the symposium. You all will receive details about how to log in to the virtual world as we get closer to the symposium. But just know that this will be a fun place for us to all meaningfully engage. A couple reminders about the collaborator showcase. Um, all showcase participants, if you submitted something, you should have received a notification about whether or not your content was accepted or rejected or conditionally accepted. Uh, uh, and for all of those that were accepted, final posters and video recordings are due September 1st. That is a hard deadline. And hopefully now you can appreciate why it's taken us a huge amount of work to create this virtual world. And all of your content that is part of that is gonna have to be put into this virtual world so that it can be shared with everybody. Um, so we're going to have to, um, uh, we need some time to be able to do that, but um, if you get us the content, we can promise that you'll do that. Also, Elise has been gracious enough to agree to um, give everybody who is a uh, presenting in, during the Collaborative Showcase their own personal uh, or small group tutorial about how GatherTown works so that you'll understand what, what's expected of you to jump into the to the, to the area to show your poster, to talk with people, you'll get to learn how to do that. So Elise has sent you all a notice that says, by the end of this week, we wanna know which one of those scheduled tutorials you wanna sign up for, so, so you can learn how to best take advantage of this collaborative space. All right, uh, uh, Craig mentioned this at the start, but I'm gonna reinforce this. A big part of our collaborator, our, our symposium will be announcing the Titan Award winners. Please do nominate your fellow colleagues. I think it's a great opportunity to recognize if you've seen great work done by others, it's a great opportunity for you to, to showcase um, your appreciation by nominating them. And uh, anybody who's nominated, I think that that's a, a win in and of itself, but we will announce winners at the symposium in each of our core seven categories. And we encourage you to, to be part of this process. In terms of some fun things that are going on, last year one of the fun things, fun silly things we did was we had a meme-a-thon and you all got really engaged in participating in the uh, meme-a-thon which was hosted in our Microsoft Teams in space. Um, so when something works really well, there's no reason not to keep it going. So we have announced that the Odyssey 2021 meme-a-thon will commence and actually already has now started in our Microsoft Teams environment. For those of you who have registered, you will, over the next, I guess, couple of weeks, receive a link to get into the Odyssey 2021 Symposium Teams environment, where you will see my very lame attempts at memes to celebrate the start of our Odyssey 2021 Symposium together. So I'm going to encourage you all to uh, to have a little bit of fun, come up with some memes to talk about Odyssey. You'll be able to post this in the channel and we'll be able to showcase this throughout the event. The other fun little thing that we're going to be doing, as Craig mentioned, is name that collaborator. Anybody know who that is? Very old picture. Is it Patrick? That is, is me. That is me. I don't know how I went from so cute to so <laughs> ugly so fast, but um, we are going to have some fun activities. I will ask that you please share a childhood photo of yourself, and we're going to see how well our community can identify each other. Uh, and so we'll be showcasing these pictures throughout the symposium so you get to know each other all a little bit better. All right, so just to conclude, Odyssey 2021 Symposium is almost here. If you are interested in having some fun with all of us, please register. 
You've got three different registrations that you need to do. If you're interested in the tutorial on building concept sets, please register for that. If you're interested in our workshop and our Odyssey reproducibility challenge, please register for that for September 13th. And if you want to engage in any way in the broader symposium, that's the main link registration, September 14th and 15th. Um, if you register for the symposium, that does not mean you're in the tutorial or workshop. Tutorial and workshop registration is limited. We only have a limited number of seats to make, a, make it a meaningful process. So you need to sign up separately. Also, don't forget, if you do register, uh, also sign up to receive a surprise. Promise that it'll be worth it. Please nominate a collaborator for the Titan Awards. Uh, and um, collaborator showcase presenters, make sure that you sign up for your Gather Town tutorial and make sure you submit your final materials. Uh, and for everybody, I'm looking forward to engaging with you all on a, a really fun and I think going to be a, a good engaging four days during our symposium next month. So, Craig, I just vomited a lot of words at you really fast, but I think we got seven minutes to answer any questions. So I'm happy to shut up and listen to other people. Sure, we will take, uh, we have a few minutes for some questions. Um, Sarah, we, we have to get you your Odyssey mask. You did win that Odyssey bingo last year. So that was that was impressive. We weren't sure anybody was going to pull that one off. Um, let's see. I know there's some questions that kind of came up throughout on the chat, so we can look at those. But if anybody wants to, uh, Oz asked the method for nomination. I assume that's for the Titans. So that is uh, in the forums. I will get the link for the Titan Award nominations on the community calls page um, uh, this afternoon. So that will be there. Everything, uh, I know somebody mentioned they missed part of this presentation. So everything from this presentation will be on our community calls page this afternoon. Uh, we have five minutes. Anybody have any questions? I know there's a lot to take in, and there's clearly a lot of excitement about Gather Town, so that's uh, that's good to see. For the Collaborator Showcase, I will mention this, and I'll send this out later, but we, we've done these videos that have um, promoted the, the uh, Community Showcase work afterwards on, on Twitter and LinkedIn and and everywhere and they're getting a lot of views last year is over 2800 views uh, of these videos so these are two two minutes uh two minute 20 is the last is the, is the absolute maximum so you so you know two minutes you can go less um but when you're doing them the thought is that they're not to draw interest to um your presentation at the symposium they are meant to actually just talk about your work after the symposium, because we you know we highlight everybody's work at least one day uh, after the event. So um, you know we'll get that information out to you. But because we're talking about the symposium and because there's no questions right now, I wanted to get that out right now. Any other questions? All right. Well, it was a very detailed uh, explanation. So certainly. Is, um, I would like to hear someone say they're excited for the Odyssey 2021 symposium. It was in the chat. It was in the chat. But yes, I think uh, there are a lot of claps, a lot of thumbs up, hearts. Yes, I do believe there is excitement. Uh, somebody, so Teams is not some, uh, uh, not Teams. Um, Gather Town is not something you need to download. It's just a website. So um, you don't need to, to download to get there. Uh, Roger, uh, Roger, do you have a question? Yeah, I, um, I, I was just curious. The, uh, those are the only tutorial, or the, the Sunday, the 12th, is the only tutorial. Other years, we've had the, you know, the kind of continuing to tutorials about, uh, um, uh, you know, the overview of OMOP and, and that sort of thing. They're not having anything like that this time? That's that's correct, Roger. So we're focusing on one tutorial to have live and engage here. The um, the other tutorials like introduction to OMOP CDM or vocabulary or ETLs, what we're really trying to do is is encourage people to take advantage of those tutorials on the Eden Academy platform. Okay. Um, so so uh, for those who are looking for introductory material there, we really want to encourage you to check that out. And for those that are interested in this new class that is not available 
in the Eden Academy or you know, not yet. We're going to produce the material and then hopefully make that become an Eden Academy class. But for now, this is the new class and all, all previous tutorials we've offered, they are all out there available on Eden, Eden Academy. So I encourage you to take a look there. Sure. I, w I was just curious because we've got some new people uh, that that uh, I would I would be encouraging to come to the uh, the symposium, um, but if they can get that through Eden, then that isn't then this part isn't necessary. So okay, I would yep. just uh, I just wanted to clarify that. Yeah, what I what I would encourage for all newcomers is please you know encourage them to take a look at the Eden Academy and probably if they can do if they could do some of the introductory stuff prior to the symposium and then join the symposium and then you'll get to you know, put some faces and 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 names and color behind all of the context, and be able to uh, engage fully in in learning from the, those that are in the community through this interactive ex activity. Okay, that's a really good idea too. If you're not familiar with the Eden Academy, or, or you know, just learning, want to learn more, our format call, our call format in two weeks is this back to school, and and certainly we will be talking about. Uh, the Eden Academy there, and uh, you know, Kristen mentioned uh, the Odyssey Center at at the Rue Institute. We can try to talk talk about that as well. So, th so that would be a good call for for people to join in two weeks. Uh, somebody in the chat wrote in the concept set tutorial, "Are you using Atlas?" Yeah, I just had to type type the response there. So yes, we will be using Atlas for creating concept sets, and we will also be showing you just how you can write queries directly against the vocabularies in the CDM. Um, but but for those that are looking for not to require doing programming, you'll be able to do it through the Atlas uh, user interface experience. Anything else? We have about a minute. Certainly you will have time uh, to, if there are more questions, we will dedicate that final call before the symposium for more questions. Uh, you can raise questions during the upcoming community calls as well. Uh, but we're really looking forward to it. Again, I really do recommend uh, registering. You know, don't don't forget register for the symposium if you want that surprise. You have to do it. I believe by August fifteenth was was the date, and then those tutorial and the workshop. Remember. Registering for the symposium does not get you into the day one and day two activities. So please make sure if you're interested in either or both, you register separately. All three registration links will be on the community call uh, page later this afternoon. Uh, we'll, okay, you answered that with the, uh, for do we need yeah, our just own for data? Those, no, not on the chat. Yeah, Andy asked the question about the workshop. Do you have to have data? You do not have to have data to be able to participate there. Um, you just need to be um, familiar with how to create uh, cohort definitions, um, which will then be centrally aggregated together and run on one common database. You don't have to bring the data, you just need to bring your knowledge. Uh, Adam asked, have all the poster talk acceptance emails gone out? I believe they were supposed to, so if you haven't heard uh, please reach out to uh, Elise or to symposium email. Uh, if anybody's unsure, please reach out to Elise uh, ASAP. Um, yeah, some some go to your spam. So if you're not sure, check that out or reach out to Elise or myself or Patrick, and uh, we'll we'll kind of round it up and figure it out. Uh, yeah, it went just, out last just, week. Just one question: Is the article they're supposed to read before? Is it freely available or do I have to pay for it? Um, it is. Uh, that's a good question. Uh, I don't know because I always log in through my library access to get to it. Uh, so I would need to we we put the when you register, you'll see the link to the article. Um, if somebody doesn't have access to it, we can't just post the post it because it's part of the journal, but we have the author's permission to provide a reproduction, so we can coordinate that. So if anybody has problems with getting access to the article, just reach out directly and we can sort that out. OK, thank you. Anything else? All right, great. Well, thank you so much to everybody for joining. Thank you to Patrick for this great presentation and all the work he and Elise and everybody's put into the symposium so far. Uh, we really are excited for it uh, next month. Uh, a lot of work to be done, but a lot of, of great things happening. 
Uh, we will see everybody next week for our next session on some of the new developments within Odyssey. Have a great week, everyone. Thanks, Greg. Thanks, everybody.